Dear Kobe, this is going to be tough, but I need to get this off my chest. Everybody clear out for me and Kobe. Clear the paint for Chuck and Kobe one last time. Kobe Bean Bryant, my guy. The first time I saw you playing against Black Jesus, you were 18 years old. I knew you were a killer. That's when I realized you were going to be a legend in this game. You were going hard at Michael Jordan that night. No fear whatsoever. I mean, I knew from passing you in traffic over the years that you were a dog. But when I saw you going at Black Jesus like that, that's when I knew you were a kindred spirit. We might have grown up in different circumstances, but when I saw you on the court and how hard you were going, I knew we were raised with the same mentality. I wasn't tall, but in my mind, I was going to be a giant out there every single night. You were 6'6". Six, six and could score in your sleep. But that wasn't even enough. You was trying to be the best that ever did it. Everybody say they want to be that, but not everybody is willing to sacrifice what it really takes to do it. Remember when I came to LA the first time our rookie year? You picked me up at the hotel and we went out to get something to eat. And you asked me what I was doing later. I said I was going to the club. I mean, we're in LA. I'm going to the club. Kobe, come on, man. And what you say? I'm going back to the gym. You probably the only dude in the history of the game where the mystique wasn't exaggerated. The Mamba was no myth, man. It didn't even do you justice. One, two, three in the morning, we knew where you were. Me and you, every single time we stepped on the floor, we were going to war. But it wasn't an animosity thing. There was never beef. It was like heavyweight fighters beating the hell out of each other. And then at the bell, it's nothing but love and respect. Greatness needs company, and we needed each other. Mike needed Prince, like Prince needed Mike. Tyson needed Holyfield, like Holyfield needed Tyson. Everybody needs that person to say, oh, you the shit, huh? Well, I'm the shit, too. And you were the shit. You were the toughest man that I've ever seen in this game. The most cold-blooded serial killer I've ever seen. The fiercest competitor I've ever seen. I remember hearing the story that you were on the road and you were watching highlights of me dropping 35 on the Knicks at the Garden our rookie year. And you got so mad, you smashed up the hotel and started researching me like you were the CIA. Get me to file on AI. I bet it was like that. Studying how great white sharks hunt down seals in the Pacific Ocean and whatnot. What I love about that story is the truth. That was just our relationship. Two dudes pushing each other to greatness. The next time you came through Philly, you were all up in my shit. There was no half-stepping. Every first step, I had to go a hundred. You were 6'6", six, six, and it was like you wanted to guard me. You wanted the challenge. You wanted to show me that you were the baddest motherfucker to ever play the game. And I ain't want no part of Kobe on the other end. Man, hell no. I ain't stopping you. Ain't nobody stopping you. You were Kobe. And you were going to do whatever you wanted to do out there because you were a sniper, an assassin, a cold-blooded killer. And now I'm talking about you in the past tense. And I still get emotional about it. It still don't seem real. You were my guy. The 2001 finals, we were going at each other like fighters. Not on some beef or hatred. That's what some people could never understand. Not out of hate out of admiration, out of love. I can't tell you how many pictures I've seen of me and you at the free throw line, talking shit and just smiling. Man, who the hell loses the NBA scoring title averaging 33 a game? How the hell you up me averaging 35 like that, man? Why you had to do that to me? You had to do it because you you. Because you Kobe Bean Bryant. Because you're a straight up giant. You probably watch me doing my thing on Sports Center every night, like 41, huh? Let me get 43. See how you like that, Chuck. I was always confident. I knew what I could do. I was a scorer. I was a winner. I did it my way. I won some games. But you were a champion. You got rings. You got rings on rings. You were loved all over the damn world. And you were loved in my own house. My oldest daughter loved Kobe Bryant. She always wanted dad to win. Don't get me wrong. 
but she wanted Kobe to go off too. My kids used to be always hitting me, talking about they wanted the Kobe kicks when they came out. They were rocking number eight and number 24 because you were one of their heroes. And if I'm being honest about it, you are a hero to me too. Even though you were younger than me, I looked up to you because of how much you sacrificed, how much you gave to this game. Anytime anybody asks me who's the greatest of all time, <laughs> I ain't gonna bullshit you. MJ is always number one. I know you'll say the same thing. Black Jesus is the GOAT. But number two, number two, I'm always gonna say Kobe Bryant. Nobody was tougher than you. Nobody got more out of me. We're linked forever in this game, in this life. I just wish we had more time. It's funny. I don't know if I ever told you this, but one of my favorite memories is coming to see you in LA when they retire eight and 24. Who the hell is so dope for so long they get two different numbers up in the rafters. I couldn't miss that moment for the world. But you know what's crazy about it? Everybody in the Staples Center was treating me like we won the ring in 2001. Security was giving me all types of problems when I was trying to get down there to the floor, man. Y'all won Los Angeles. I'm trying to get to the court and congratulate you like that's my guy. And security is looking at me like I'm crazy. Y'all won, y'all got all the rings. Man, I finally got onto the floor and I gave you a hug and you were holding your baby girl in your arms. That was a moment I'll never forget. I was just so happy to be there. I was happy to be a part of the legacy that is Kobe being Bryant. Where did time go, man? The first trip to LA feels like it was yesterday. We were just kids with everything in front of us. You asked me what I was doing later. I told you I was going to the club. You told me you were going back to the gym. I'll never forget that. You're not here on this earth anymore, but you're not going either. You just say the name Kobe Bryant and all the memories come back in a split second. I can see you pointing your finger up in the air, walking up the court after you dropped 81 on Toronto. I can see you jumping in the air just like Mike after you won the title. I can see you standing there next to me at the free throw line, smiling. Not even saying anything. Just looking at me like it's on, Chuck. Those memories ain't going nowhere. And yeah, we're going to cry. We're still going to cry sometimes when we remember that you really gone. But we're going to smile like a motherfucker every time we think of the memories. I don't really know how I'm supposed to close out a letter like this. I don't really know how to say goodbye to an NBA legend, a father, a husband, a friend. I don't really have the words. All I know is, love you, bro. Sincerely, Chuck.